Welcome back to the Howler Podcast. I'm Chelsea. I'm Mary. And we are back with a bonus episode. We are so excited to bring you another roundtable episode. If you are a Howler Podcast listener, you know that our standard episodes, we are interviewing our senior leaders. Um, but we're really excited with these roundtables that we can introduce you to the broader pack. Um, so we are happy to have three pack members with us today. Um, and we are going to talk all about pack unity. Yeah, so like Chelsea said, we're going to have a great roundtable discussion with some really beautiful humans here at the PAC. Our last roundtable discussion, if you missed it, was on mental health and well-being. It was a great conversation. Um, you can catch it. Um, I think it was episode number four. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, we, we named them like bonus episode one. You can find bonus episode one wherever you listen to podcasts normally. Um, but yes, this Compact Unity is our diversity, equity, and inclusion and belonging initiative here at Arctic Wolf. So before we get into our conversation, whether you're watching or listening, we want to introduce you to the PAC members we have on the call with us. So, um, okay, guests, we're so excited to have you. If everyone could share so the audience can put your faces and or your voices to your names and a little bit about what you do, if you could share your name, your location, your role, and if you're willing, your pronouns. And then two things, your favorite thing about running with the PAC and what does PAC unity mean to you? So it's a lot. Take your time. Whoever wants to go first can jump in. Uh, Sure. I'll go first. I think I'm on your left side. Um, Hi, my name is Chitty, Chitty Egwin. I am a project manager uh, for the Manager Winners product on the security awareness and training team. Uh, In my role, we uh, drive projects, schedules for internal MA teams, such as R&D, content, the strategy team, uh, the product team as well. We also coordinate between internal MA teams and the larger Arctic Wolf team. I have been at Arctic Wolf for two years and five months now. Um, In this role since October, I originally started as a customer support manager when we were acquired um, from a different company. What does Pack Unity mean to me? Or oh, what do I love about Pack Unity? I love the, I love the culture. I love the camaraderie. Um, Pack Unity means uh, no one gets left behind. You know, uh, you respect people. You consider everybody, and you bring people along with you. So um, that's that's what Pack Unity means to me. That's Happy to be here. Yeah, we're so happy you're here. For the listener that might not know our internal lingo, MA is for managed awareness, right? Yes, managed awareness. Yes, and it's one of the products here at Arctic Wolf. And your, what's your favorite thing about being part of the pack? Like I said, it's the camaraderie, the importance that we place on respecting others and being considerate. Um, it really makes you pause before you react. I I love that so much because we, um, you know, almost always, especially in the world we live now, people are quick to react to things. Uh, but because at every Black Unity meeting that we've gone to, there's that blurb that, you know, the leaders read out really quickly. And it always says, you know, respect others. Uh, don't take it personally. Listen to understand and not to respond, that always, that really resonates with me. So um, that's my favorite thing about the pack is the respect and, you know, just carrying everybody along. Thanks, Chitty. And Chitty, fun fact, is an avid traveler. Avid. And you want to bond with someone who loves to travel. So I'm excited for rapid fire when we ask, but don't spoil it now, when we ask. <laughs> next place on your bucket list. Yes, yes. I know we talked about this when I first met you. I love that. Uh, so my name is John Taylor. I go by JT. Many know me uh, by JT, but I go by both, John or JT. I am currently located in our San Antonio, Texas location. I am from Utah originally, so sometimes you'll see me in the office there if you're listening um, and you're an employee at Arctic Wolf in Pleasant Grove. I am a technical trainer with the security services team. 
And most of what I do involves the monthly release train. Uh, every month, our R&D and product organization releases new features and software updates, uh, both for internal teams and for our customers. And I train the security services organization on those changes. And that happens on a monthly basis. So love what I do, love getting to, to learn about the Arctic Wolf solutions in depth and then get to teach that to other people. So it's a great job. Um, one of my favorite things about running with the pack is I really believe in what Arctic Wolf is doing uh, for the world, right? Um, our, our slogan is end cyber risk, right? And we know there's, there's a lot of breaches out there. There's a lot of malicious people and a lot of malicious actors that are trying to take advantage of people's data and their information. And, and I love that Arctic Wolf is protecting people. There's people behind everything that we do. Even if you are a security analyst and you feel maybe all you're doing all day is looking at log lines or you're just responding to certain events that are being logged by a computer, just remember that there is a person behind what you are doing. And that's what I love about Arctic Wolf. Um, Pack Unity to me, uh, kind of like what Chidi was saying, is running together. You know, the wolves run in a pack and there are many different kinds of wolves, right? We know there's, there's uh, Arctic wolves, there's wolves that, that don't live in Arctic places, that live in the mountains or they live in different in climates. And just like wolves, each of us comes from a different background. We have different experiences. And I love that Pack Unity works to, to bring all of our experiences together so that we can increase our diversity of thought and diversity of perspective at Arctic Wolf. So good. And JT, so humble, is the co-founder of Lobos. Do you want to share a little bit about Lobos, JT? Absolutely. Yeah, Lobos <laughs> is our employee resource group or our Pack Unity Alliance is what we call them here at Arctic Wolf. Uh, it's our Pack Unity Alliance for Hispanics and Latinos, Latinas, and Latinx people, and allies as well. We love our allies, and it, it's a party, honestly. <laughs> we, we get to learn about all the different cultures and perspectives from people who identify as Hispanic or Latino or Latine, and it's it's been amazing. We've We've gotten to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month multiple times now, each with great turnouts. Um, lots of great food, great music, fun activities. Mm -hmm. And when not in Hispanic Heritage Month, we also get to celebrate some of the, the cultural traditions that come from different countries in Latin America and other places where uh, people identify with being Hispanic or, or Latino or Latina, Latinx. And for non-Spanish speakers, they might not know, but Lobos means wolves in did you already say that? Uh, I didn't say that. No, but you are correct. Lobos <laughs> is a direct translation from Spanish and Portuguese, actually. Uh, the word lobo means wolf. So cool. It's been so fun to see the Lobos community grow at Arctic Wolf mm -hmm. and from Salsa y Salsa to Colombia's Independence Day to Los Reyes de Mayo, I think. My... Yeah. I know, we've had <laughs> some insane growth over the past two years that said that our uh, Pack Unity Alliance has existed. And it's just been so much fun. It's really cool, the community that you inspired with Anthony. So yeah, Anthony has been a great partner. Okay. Last but not least. Thank you. I'm Trisha Farrow um, at Arctic Wolf. I serve as vice president of people, um, which means I have the team of people experience that Mary leads and Chelsea is on um, working alongside them. I also work alongside our leader in L and D Kim Kramer and Sam Otto. And then I have a people business partner team that spans across the globe um, as well. So really exciting role here at Arctic Wolf to be a part of. Um, I also, for since I've been in Arctic Wolf for the past three years, based out of Eden Prairie, Minnesota, I have been serving as the PAC Unity co-chair with along with Mary. And I am passing the torch to Chelsea. And I'm super excited to continue to see um, the growth of Pack Unity. It's been, um, I guess I'll lead into just what Pack Unity means to me. It's been, and it continues to be the opportunity for me to really, um, like for me personally, connect both my head and my heart to the work and the people that make up our pack with the intentional goal of 
of meeting people where they're at and understanding them individually, and then hopefully collectively bringing people along on our journey so that every single wolf feels that they can thrive here at Arctic Wolf, in addition to um, kind of their their connection of the head and heart happening too. So when JT lights up and talks about Lobos, I see that and I get so excited because not only is he thriving in his career here, but he's thriving in something that he's passionate about and volunteering to do and creating a space for other individuals and allies that identify with the Lobos community. And that just, it's its just really cool to see and it's been really cool to be a part of. And I can't wait to see what PAC Unity will continue to grow to be in the years to come. I use the pronoun she, her, I'm kind of going out of order here. <laughs> <laughs> and what I love most about the pack, uh, I know it sounds cliche being I am in the people team, but I will say the people. Um, and I consider it a true honor and priv privilege that I get to come to work here at Arctic Wolf every single day. There is many other companies in this world, but we're choosing to be a part of Arctic Wolf and Arctic Wolf has chosen us. And I, the people that make up our pack, um, truly is, is just, it's been fun to be a part of and, and I consider it a, a true blessing. Love everything you had to say. And I feel like we can't, I mean, we'd be remiss not to just, um, talk. I feel like you're a, an unsung hero of the podcast mm. or not an unsung hero of the mm. podcast, but I mean, Trisha and I, if you, if you're a listener of the podcast, we've referenced Trisha a lot. She's mm -hmm. like, guys, don't go in your head alone. Um, but as far as pack unity goes, Trisha's fingerprints are all over it and mm -hmm. say things are on the pack. Like when you know better, you do better and we're stronger together. And mm -hmm. um, those are direct, that's Trisha's influence infiltrating into how we operate and care for each other. Well, so we would not be where we are today without you, Trisha. And um, mm -hmm. it's an honor to have you lead us. And so it's great that you can be on the podcast today. So thanks thank for you. having me. As I said, I feel like I'm with some celebrities here. <laughs> what? With you? Okay. I, I miss it. I'm with you. I just, I feel so this is how we break into Hollywood, guys. <laughs> right? Um, Chelsea and Mary's podcast. Already. This is it. Wow. It's a big We're story. <laughs> yeah, no. No, we're honored to have you all on the podcast. Trust us. <laughs> Um, before we get into our next question, I did just, I know we heard about Trisha's influence and JT leading um, Lobos. Chitty, I just wanted to talk a little bit about your influence within Pack Unity. Um, I know you've been a super active member of Women Transforming Tech, um, and now you are stepping into the leadership role for our Black Employee Alliance. So just wanted to give you your flowers as well. Um, and if there's anything you kind of want to share about your experience and journey, into these leadership positions. Well, I am I'm I'm really humbled number 1 cuz I you know I've told you Chelsea when they first when it was first suggested I was ready to run in the opposite direction but you know um, they everybody before me now um, Darius and Kemi and Amina and Baba Tunde they have done all of the hard work, okay? Mm -hmm. They have laid such a solid foundation. Um, there's not too much else we can do because they took this from nothing with Trisha's support and brought it to where it's at now. So my only hope is that, you know, in conjunction with um, uh, Benga and we can, you know, build on what they've already started, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I'm honored and I can't wait to see where this takes us. Yeah, so I have no doubt that you guys are going to, to your point, build on the wonderful success of the Alliance so far, and it's just going to get even better. So I agree. excited to have you, yes, in that role. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's jump in to our first official question. <laughs> um, could one of you share with us um, maybe one experience that has shaped your understanding of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and kind of what drives you to be an advocate. So I had an awesome experience last year uh, through the nonprofit that I volunteer with, Raisa Cyber Org. 
I had the opportunity to attend the RSA conference 2023 in San Francisco. And I got to participate in a lot of roundtables and just um, talks that were focused on the topic of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And some things that kind of stuck out to me were that inclusion is not a data point, it's a feeling. And that's something that I wanted to like kind of bring up now. Because um, a lot of times I think, I've, I've been in management here at Arctic Wolf before, and, and I, I know everyone here has some sort of um, vested interest in, in uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion here at Arctic Wolf. And a lot of times I think we, we focus too much on, on what we can see in the data. Don't get me wrong, the data is amazing and it, and it helps us you know, get funding to support our employee resource groups and to, to help people feel or help people be seen um, as far as from a numbers perspective. But really uh, diversity, equity and inclusion is more than just like the measurable number, it's the sentiment at your organization. And so I think that you know, if, if people are leaving a company, they're not really leaving their job. A lot of times they're leaving people, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so what is it that we can do to foster a place where, where people feel comfortable being themselves and, and sharing their culture with others? I think that was something that really resonated with me um, at that talk when I was at RSA. Um, the other thing is we should not only consider our hiring pipeline, but also the leaky pipe. Do we have a leaky pipe? Um, mm. I know a lot of times we put a, a bunch of effort into hiring diverse talent, but what are we doing to preserve the diverse talent that we already have? Um, so those are just some like keys that key takeaways that I had from that that conference and kind of wanted to bring up here and, you know, kind of tickle your brain a little bit about. Yeah, I loved that. The 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 point of no or that inclusion is not a data point, but a feeling. And I think that's where a lot of our talk around belonging mm -hmm. comes in. Here at Arctic Wolf, we use DEIB, so diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Well, it makes me think when you were sharing that, JT, this question will come up later, but as Chelsea and I are preparing for this interview, I was just thinking about some of my thoughts as well. And one of my, some of my favorite PAC Unity moments on the journey have just been the conversations that have happened after a PAC Unity event, where somebody comes up to me in tears and says, I've been working in the US for 20 years and I've never once got to celebrate holy. I've been here, I've worked my whole life and I've never seen this experience happen or feel seen in this way and feeling so seen and heard here. I feel like um, we've had so many different stories of people connecting with their heritage or getting to celebrate and share their culture that means so much to them with others. Um, so when you were talking about the feeling I mean, it's definitely something that I've seen here. Even I think if you're open to sharing in your story, JT, the first time we celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month and um, you sharing your story and getting to integrate your personal with your professional. Yeah. Um, so I, I grew up in a small town where I was one of the only Hispanic, darker skin toned kids at my school. Um, and so I didn't see it really a lot of people that represented what I felt like. And um, as I got older, it got a little bit better, right? More diverse people started to move into the area. Um, but I really felt like the pinnacle of when I, I felt like I was represented was when I came to Arctic Wolf, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the, the birth of our PAC Unity Alliance Lobos was, was kind of a, a turning point for me where I, I knew that, you know, I had a duty as someone who was given this position of authority and, and privilege to, to be able to pave this path for other people who have felt similar to how I have. Um, so really like being at Arctic Wolf has, has really helped me kind of spread my wings. Um, and hopefully I've had that same impact on other people who have worked here and are working here currently. Not hopefully you have yeah, for sure. Have, thank yeah. you. Lobos, and I think about you're the ones that inter you are the one that introduces Trias to cyber who we've, we've sent PAC members to their conference, yeah. like that, had, you know, and the ripple effect. So it's, it's when Trisha and all of us, I mean, but, you know, we talk about being stronger together. It's something Trisha says all the time. Um, it's just so true. Like this, what we have here at Arctic Wolf isn't because of any, 
thing we have on our careers page or one person's effort in any different seat in the organization, but it's everyone and how they come together. And actually JT at the beginning of the podcast, he said, I love that impact unity. We bring all our experiences together to increase our diversity of thought and how we serve our customers. And um, even just in your example, like it impacted you positively and now you're paving the way that's positively impacting others and making Arctic Wolf a place where more are seen and safe. So. Absolutely. For me, um, I think mine happened in college. Um, uh, I volunteered at um, an international student and scholar services office, and it was like for freshmen who had just like, who were was the first semester at the University of Houston. So I remember walking in there that day and I was like, oh my gosh like people from everywhere, you know, and I, I I didn't mention this earlier, but I live in Houston and Houston's super diverse, right? Like it is every continent on the planet is here, but like the college campus really just opened my eyes to like just the diversity of humans, people from different nations, people from different religions, different socioeconomic backgrounds. And, And I'm like, this is just, where I want to be. So I'm always people oriented, like my friendships, my life at work. I just, I found that after that day, um, well, I learned a lot of patience that day because, you know, meeting people from different places forces you to not center yourself, but actually listen to them because you're able to guide them because folks communicate in different ways. So I find myself since then leaning towards anything, any project that involves um, growing yourself, growing uh, diversity of opinions, you know, learning. And that that's that's how it was for me. It wasn't, it's, it's been so long, um, I've leaned towards that, that it just, it seemed natural that when I came to, that I joined the path that I'll figure out a way to like, you know, contribute, you know, for lack of a better way to describe it. Well, it makes me think, Chitty, and I love it, how you talk about how when you're in school and you met all these diverse individuals, and I loved how you said it forces you not to center yourself, but to really listen, um, to hear other people's stories, because they're communicating differently than how you might normally. But it makes me think of how you're the one that has spearheaded um, the Women of the Week spotlights that we do on LinkedIn and writing the articles that amplify and tell other women's stories. So it's cool to see how you appreciate the stories of others and you are part of amplifying other people's stories. I love hearing other people's stories. You just never know what you're, because everyone just, we're regular in the workplace, you know, like everyone's doing their work and then we have this up to, and I need to be clear, a lot of that work is done with marketing. Shout out to Ryan Johnson. I love, I love Ryan. Oh my gosh, yes. I don't know what many of us would do without Ryan and uh, Chule and Vic on Women Transforming Tech. Um, the idea was there, you know, they just needed somebody to raise their hand to, you know, kind of guide it. And I was happy to, but yes, it opens your eyes to like all the different people you can meet. And I get to read all of these stories before they're actually posted. So it's uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. There's a learning experience that kind of is coming to my mind. It probably was, oh, I think it may be 10 years ago or so, maybe not quite 10 years, but it, JT, you made me think of it when you were talking about the, you know, inclusion is an individual feeling, right? I think belonging is as well. But I was at a conference, a seminar in DEIB, and oftentimes, while it's so foundational to the understanding of this work, oftentimes equality and equity can be used or or thought of to be the same thing, but they are not the same thing. Um, And there was an analogy at that conference that has just stuck with me that, I mean, I'm going to use Jordans because if you know me, I love a good pair of J's and Nikes. Um, So what I will say is, Equality would be if I if I gave each of you the same pair of Jordans, the same size, and just mailed it to you. All of you, a size nine, women's pair of J's. That's equality. But equity that would work for me. <laughs> work for JT and Chitty. No, I'm joking. Um, 
But equity is if I took the time to find out, does anyone need an insole insert for their high mm -hmm. arch or does are you a wide or are you a size 10? Can you wear the kid's size? Can you, whatever it is, right? And equity is making sure that the pair of shoes I mail to JT fit him to, to Chitty and they all look differently. And so even on the journey of equity and belonging, it can be individualized, right? And it is. And to take that into account because it's not always a blanket. It can't be a blanket approach. I love that analogy, Trisha. I've heard similar, and I, th I think it's a really helpful visual for the difference between equity and inclusion. On the topic, though, of it can't be an individualized approach, I think that leads really well to our next question of, as you all have been leading in the DEI space and promoting inclusion, what are some challenges, challenges that you faced and how have you overcome them? So I think a challenge that I've seen, um, not necessarily within our organization or our company, but outside, um, is sometimes there's like collision between different uh, diversity groups. Um, and what I mean by that is sometimes we get so focused on, on our own plans and supporting our own group that we kind of silo ourselves a little bit. And I think it does a bit more harm than, than help. Uh, what I want to see more of, I think, in just the professional world and working with a lot of like nonprofits and stuff is we should come together because we all have a common goal, right? And that is to increase diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging in the cybersecurity space. Um, and so instead of siloing ourselves and, and focusing too much on what makes us different, let's try to work together, find out what makes us similar or what we have in common and work towards a common goal. Unity. Unity. Okay. <laughs> it would be fatigue for me. And much like JT, it's not really um, here, like company related. It's just life in general. Like um, you, you want to do the right thing, but, and you do the right thing, but you get tired because it seems like you're not making a difference. Right. Like, mm -hmm. but then, I have to remind myself that, um, well, giving up is not an option, right? Like um, it's challenging. You can't bring everyone because everyone, people have their own thoughts about all of this. But even if you're able to rotate the mind of somebody else, you know, like, you know, take one person, you've succeeded. Um, people before us, ancestors, if if they had given up, none of us would have any of what we had right now. We wouldn't even have the option to be discussing this. So whenever I feel tired or fatigued by the conversations or the lack of or lack thereof, you know, um, mm -hmm. you just don't give up. You just keep trying. Cliche mm -hmm. as it sounds, but just keep going. <laughs> well, I want to touch on that, Shitty, because fatigue is a real issue within the DEI space. And a lot of times um, we are asking the, I guess, affected community or the community that is fighting for said equity to be doing a lot of that work. Um, and there's that fine balance between obviously like elevating voices and giving people a seat at the table, but also not putting all of the work on them. So I'm just curious if anyone has any I know, Chitty, you just shared, like, remembering all the work that our ancestors have done to get us here. Um, but does anyone else have any other, like, practices or maybe, like, self-care tips? Um, because it can feel, like, really tiring and it feels like a very long, long road. And sometimes it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, even though we know there is light. I think you have to find your people, right? Mm -hmm. Um Many of you know, Mary, know I'm married to a black man raising biracial children, and we've had tons and tons of experiences outside of the workplace. And ever since I dated him in the seventh grade, um, that even as an interracial couple, we experienced. And I think long ago, I realized we got to find our people. And when you do, you can, you know, when I'm weak, someone else can be strong for me. Um, and so that's something that that we've been intentional about and i think we've been intentional about that as well here at the pack with 
Mary's really vision on the ambassador program. Um, those are for allies and advocates to come alongside our alliances and for us to tap into that group as well so that it can be strong when when others are weak or not weak, but tired um, and and just need someone else to carry the weight. Right. And um, mm -hmm. I think with Impact Unity, Chelsea, Mary and I always talk about this, that we never want the burden of the work to fall on those who have been, you know, at the at the hands of uh, you know unfair systems and things of that nature throughout the, the throughout time right and so we try to be really intentional about that we don't always get it right um but when mary says when we know better we do better and no doubt we make mistakes along the way i can think of a couple um <laughs> that that you know we've made here and we we get the feedback and we course correct and i think um it makes me think of uh so that's what I'd say mental health, but I don't mean to go on a tangent. There's a quote Brené Brown uses and she says, I'm not, she said, I'm not here to, I'm not here to get it. I'm not here to be right. I'm here to get it right. And so I think we can do that the more, um, the collectively like JT to your point of everyone coming together in unity. I think we can do that together. Um, so okay. find your people. Yeah. I agree with that. I think that both of our points actually mesh really well together because we we can't do it alone. We can try, right? But I felt that exhaustion from trying to do it all on my own. And sometimes you get so passionate about it that you're just like, I'm the only one who cares about this, so I'm going to do it the best. But I've realized myself that is such a selfish perspective, and I give myself way too much credit, right? Because I think that I can do it all, but I really can't. I do need that help. I can't have diversity of perspective by myself right mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no. so i i completely agree with you um mm. we need we need the help right and and now coming into like a an example from here at arctic wolf i'm thinking back to just recently we had hispanic heritage month and then day of the dead dia de los muertos like back to back and anthony my my pack unity alliance partner and i we're, we're feeling a bit overwhelmed because Hispanic Heritage Month is, is a big deal. It's a whole month. You know, you got to plan activities and you got to plan all this stuff. And so we decided that we were going to trust those that were a part of our PAC Unity Alliance to take over Dia de los Muertos. And they did a beautiful job. Um, we were able to celebrate in, in each of our office locations and each office had their ofrenda that they made. If you don't know what an ofrenda is, it's like a an altar, an altar that is decorated with like flowers and, and decor and pictures of your, of your ancestors who have, who have passed. And each office had one of them and, and it was amazing. And, and Anthony and I hardly had to do anything. Um, and so really, I think just putting the trust in your people is going to be of huge benefit. And I think it addresses both, of, both of the challenges that we've, we've talked about. And I'm sure those individuals had, that gave them the opportunity to create, to tell their story, to lead, mm -hmm. and just the pride that they feel from getting to share their heritage. Yeah, it um, really did. Great. Well, we've teased out a couple of our wonderful events that we've had, Hispanic Heritage Month, Mary mentioned Holy earlier in the episode. Um, but could you all maybe go around and share one of your favorite PAC Unity events or initiatives to date? Well, Wolf, for me, I, <laughs> and I'm a silent participant, right? Like I feel bad because I see the Slack channel and I wish, but I just never, cause I'm never on time with it, but I love Well Wolf so much. Um, Yay. Shout out to Chelsea. <laughs> hey. No, but I, I love that you you figured out a way to incorporate um, work and life balance while at work, you know, um, taking little breaks, um, going out, the walking. I love exercising. So I love that we keep pushing that, go out into the sunlight because we all could do with a little extra vitamin D, you know, clear mm -hmm. your mind and do it with your colleagues because that's the best time to get to know a colleague is on your little walks in between meetings and back at the office. So Well Wolf has to be my favorite. I, I'm so sorry, Chelsea, that I never send in a... <laughs> that was totally fine. I'm a participant, um... but I tell everyone I know about it. I mean, 500 points for getting it on the Howler podcast. 
Yeah. yeah, exactly. The awareness is what's important. The fact that you're noticing and even if you're not submitting, you're making that mental note of like, oh, yeah, I should get outside. I should go on my wolf walk. Mm-hmm. For those of you that don't know, Well Wolf is our um, wellness initiative here at Arctic Wolf. And we really try to look at a holistic approach to well-being. Um, so we have a lovely Well Wolf pyramid that Mary created. Um, and we look at five different kind of components of well-being. Um, so glad to hear that you love that, Chitty. And we also have um, to our wellness and well-being um, topic, we have a Pack Unity Alliance mental health and well-being who we have mentioned on the podcast before in our um, mental health roundtable, but they do amazing work. It's a community of PAC members um, who have created such a safe space to be vulnerable. Um, I feel like we've used this example before, but sometimes you'll go into that Slack channel and there'll be a PAC member that's just posted, hey, I'm having a really hard day. And immediately 12 responses in the thread from people they don't even know, they likely don't work with on a day to day, could be on the other side of the world. Um, And it's not, every workplace that has a community and space like that. So again, we're really lucky here at Arctic Wolf. Truly. And every time I see those posts, I can't help but think of the numerous people that are feeling the exact same way that see Mm -hmm. that and now know I'm not alone in this. Mm -hmm. I'm not weird or a failure or there's nothing wrong with me because I'm struggling today. This is like part of the human experience. Yes. Mm-hmm. And through this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was actually going to, to mention um, the PAC Unity Alliance for Mental Health Wellbeing uh, because it's, it's one of my favorites, honestly. I think, you know, emotions and mental health, like that's a universal experience, right? Everyone has their ups and their downs, and everyone experiences something, it seems. And so um, I'm super grateful. Sometimes I just lurk in that channel, I don't participate too much because maybe I'm not brave enough or vulnerable enough to, to want to share with, with the crowd. Um, but I appreciate those who do because sometimes I share those experiences and it makes me feel more seen on that front. Mm-hmm. Love that. Um, my favorite pack unity event is amplify. We've done amplify for two years in a row. And for those that don't know about amplify, uh, we partner with, other tech companies uh, and the intent of the event is to connect, elevate and amplify and grow black tech professionals within within our sphere. So um, it's been an incredible um, just group of people to be a part of. Um, Mary has been the unsung hero in all of that because it takes a lot of companies coming together, speakers um, and things of that nature to make that happen. But I love that event. Uh, and we'll be doing that again this year for our third year. Best one yet. <laughs> I was just going to say, I was just going to add, and we did expand Amplify this past year during Hispanic Heritage Month. And I just want to give a shout out to JT because I know he led Amplify for Hispanic tech professionals. And that was hosted in our San Antonio office, which is fun. So just love to see how an idea can grow. Um, and to your point, if we're all working together, we can go even farther. And I think it bring, it hits on your point that you made earlier, JT, about like, let's not be so siloed and let's come together, a rising tide lifts all boats and Amplify specifically, we partner with local organizations and businesses to say, hey, like we're all in this together. How can we make our community better mm-hmm. for whether it's black tech professionals or Latino tech professionals? Um, before we move to the next question, though, Chelsea, so for those that don't know, Chelsea is just the unsung hero behind all of our PAC Unity Alliances. She comes alongside of our leaders, supports events. So Chelsea, I need to, we need to know what your favorite event so far. Oh, yes. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, no. no this is a choice. I can't pick because I work with all of them. Um, I... I know Mary already mentioned it, but I also really loved Holy, Mm -hmm. um, which was an event that our Happy Wolves, which is honoring Asian and Pacific Islander, um, that alliance held last year. Um, And Holy is a festival of color and spring and love and light. Um, And I've just never been at a workplace that has celebrated that event. Um, 
So it was just a new experience and we did a really fun activity in a lot of our offices where we had different colored paints and we did like a hand, kind of kind of like the elementary yeah. school hand print art. Um, we did that in our offices and it was just really fun. But honestly, it's so hard to pick. Like JT said, like Dia de los Muertos was awesome, seeing the ofrendas in the office. I think I'm recognizing a theme. I love color. Like <laughs> I, I'm really loving the events that bring a lot of color. Um, and we can't forget salsa y salsa. Oh, yeah. Yes. And yes. yes. And Tai Chi. Salsa. Oh, yeah. I, yes, I we've had Tai Chi salsa. virtually when. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. It was, I forget his name because I remember thinking I was going to reach out to him and tell him how I could continue. But um, he led it during when we had it. Gary. Gary. His yes. name is Gary. Yeah. Is Gary. Um, Yes. Yeah, salsa event. We were doing Tai Chi. I mean, again, not every day in the middle of your workday, you're busting out Tai Chi. So <laughs> we have so many fun events. 2022 Pride Month, Nick um, Mosier, keynote speaker here at the mm-hmm. back, is up there on my list as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love them. Yes. And I love what Mosier does. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Org. Nick looked Fabulous. For those of you listening, I I just feel bad you weren't there to witness the amazing outfit, the incredible talk. It was on Allyship Beyond Just Pride Month. Mm. Uh, But yes, Nick's an amazing person and Mosher is an incredible org. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are approaching our final nine minutes here. So before we get to rapid fire, I was thinking we skip to our last question. Would love just to hear a little bit peek more into your heart of what is the world you hope to see someday? And how do you hope and believe that the work that you do with Impact Unity and what we're doing together here at Arctic Wolf will contribute to that future? So I, with this question, I want to start by saying, a little, acknowledging the reality that we live in right now. Uh, I was having a really interesting conversation actually after our, our salsa event a few months ago. And I was talking to one of our one of our team members here in the San Antonio office. He he actually led the the salsa dancing, and we were talking about how fortunate we feel to live in a location and to work at a company where we can celebrate our culture and our differences, um, because there are many places in the world that that don't have that privilege. They they can't talk about culture or they can't celebrate culture in workplace or in public, uh, whether it be due to uh, war or lack of resources or uh, civil unrest. Um, we are very fortunate to, to have the resources that we have here at Arctic Wolf and um, in the office locations where, where we choose to do business. Um, and so I hope to see a world where we can continue to do the things that we do here at Arctic Wolf. Like I, I just so wish that the people who, who didn't have that opportunity um, I wish that they could have those opportunities and they could, they could see the beauty in, in cultures from all over the world and, and where people come from. Um, and something that kind of resonated with me that Chidi, uh, you, you mentioned earlier is about like our ancestors, right? Uh, people who came before us paved a path for us and maybe that was years ago, right? Where things were, maybe even more challenging, you know, they, they had to, to stick out and rise above everybody. And, and now we, we live in a time where I think that the platform is being given to us, right? We, we have a place where we can, we can speak out. And those of us who are going to, to listen to the call um, should rise up and, and accept the call. Um, Cause are we not all pioneers as well? Yeah. Yeah. Trailblazers. I feel like you should yeah. mic drop. I mean, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I co-sign. Jesus, she she said, all of us. Just, yeah. <laughs> it was so eloquently said. I mean, yes. in my mind with that question, it was like that, that everyone is celebrated, right? And I do think it is a privilege and honor. And I thought, like, you said it way more eloquently than I, but where we don't actually need this, this is just what is, right? This is just what infiltrates the world, the companies. And and that we don't even, I mean, yes, pack unity, but it just is who we are. Just mm-hmm. it is, right? Um, where people allowed, are allowed to be 
who they are and be celebrated for who they are. Um, yeah, free from injustice and inequities and all of those things um, yeah. is my dream as well. But you said it way more eloquently. Oh, no, what you said was beautiful. <laughs> oh, <perfect. laughs> I love how encouraging this podcast is. Everybody was like, shout out to this person. Oh. <laughs> shout out to this That's person. <laughs> um, okay, well then should we get to rapid fire? Everyone feeling good? Yeah, before we do, I was just thinking this because we did have one question of share resources you found helpful and would recommend to people on their journey, mm -hmm. TED Talks, podcast books that don't know where to start. So I think Chelsea and I will reach out to our guests today and maybe get their recommendations and we'll put them in the show notes if there's mm -hmm. like some after books because I think that'd be valuable. Yes. We just are running out of time today. <laughs> Great idea, Mary. Um, okay, rapid fire is exactly what it sounds like. Don't think too hard, just first thought that comes to your mind, okay? And we'll go in the order that I see you all. So we're gonna go Trisha, Chitty, JT, okay? Okay. All right, Trisha, best concert of your life? Boys to Men. I love it. Beyonce on the Ron tour. Mm, love it. So last year I got uh, front row tickets to Charlie Puth in Austin and I love him. So it was amazing. Mm, fun. Okay. All three were top tier answers in my opinion. Okay. <laughs> Trisha, favorite word? Legacy. Indicative. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know why this came to mind, but I love the name of the country, Azerbaijan. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. Um, a place on your bucket list. Bali. Tanzania. Singapore. Oh, you're going to go Singapore. Okay. Ask me. Let me know when you guys are planning those trips and I will tag along. Um, <laughs> what's something that people often get wrong about you? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe that, but they would never guess. I worked at a drive through liquor store in college. <laughs> oh, okay. I just changed the question because I couldn't think of anything. Oh, that's totally, that's a fun fact. Fun fact. For sure. Um, I can, I don't know if I can say, do you know what RBF is? I, I, that's my Yes. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so, so <laughs> things are like mean, but I can't, I'm like, no, don't let the face fool you. You have to talk to me. So it's it's a complete misunderstanding. I don't know. So I try hard to recalibrate, mm. but I don't mean it to be. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. hard. For those who don't know, RBF just means that your face maybe doesn't look like you're thrilled or having a great time. Just your natural face maybe doesn't have a smile on it. <laughs> <laughs> Pity. For me, people think that I am a lot more mature than I think I am. People think that I have like a like a an old soul, I think. But really, I feel like I'm like an 11 year old at heart. Like I still play. Films. <laughs> I love Shrek. Like I, I much prefer animated films to like live action. I'm I'm a little boy at heart. <laughs> Okay, wow. I will admit, I definitely put you in the old soul category. Wow. Got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I was wrong. He Shrek likes Shrek, everyone. New Flash. I like Shrek. Shrek 2. Right. <laughs> okay, last one. Um, give us a snapshot of an ordinary moment in your life that has brought you joy. Mm. Family movie night watching it with my children on Sunday nights in our bed and my one child in each arm. Oh, yes. Do the yeah. family eat snacks? During yes, of course. I make popcorn and I hide candy in the popcorn. And Ooh. they're like, mom, make sure you hide the candy. I'm like, no, not tonight. And then there's, oh, cute. And then of course it's always there. Yeah. Love. I CrossFit, so if I break my PR, like if recently I deadlifted 250 pounds, so oh. I was like 
so excited. So it's time I can top my previous, you know, personal record. Just makes me happy. Wow. Like, okay. Way to go. That's amazing. Yeah. This might seem not ordinary to some people, but to me, it felt ordinary. I just so happened to be in a different country when this happened. Um, so I lived in Guatemala for two years, as I've told a lot of people at Arctic Wolf. And during that time, we were doing a service project for a family. And after we were walking away from their house, we had to walk a long ways to get to the bus stop. And if you know anything about Central America, it's very tropical and the weather can be something different every 20 minutes. And it was super hot when we were working on like the service project. And then when, as we were leaving, it just poured rain, like a rainstorm that I'd never seen in my entire life. It was just like so wet, so dreary, but I felt like a sense of peace and, and just knowing that like what I was doing was the right thing. And it just felt like so real, just like being so close to like nature and, and just like experiencing just rainfall in the moment. I just like felt so in touch with like life and my reality. Um, so that's just the experience I wanted to share. Oh, that sounds love it. Beautiful. Such great answers. Well, thank you everyone for being on the podcast today. I was just looking at my notes really quickly and I noticed um, that we use the word people a lot today. People centric, caring about people, people first. Um, and I think it just shows how important we how important people are here at Arctic Wolf that um, we care about people. We wanna make community where people feel that they can show up as their true selves and feel safety and belonging and respected. Um, and you three are people that help us <laughs> with that mission. And because of that, we're stronger together. So thank you all so much for all that you do for PAC Unity, for the PAC. Um, and we're so glad that we could share all of your wisdom and knowledge with, with the rest of the world. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Hopefully next time there's hot wings. <laughs> I know. I'm down I'm for the challenge. Oh, <laughs> we didn't plan that. That was all. That was all him. <laughs> yes. 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 This is great. Um, it was delightful. Thank you all so much mm -hmm. for showing so up much. today and for showing up every day. Like Chelsea said, the pack is a better place because you're here. So if you are a pack member, um, please join Pack Unity if you are not in it already. Pack Unity Slack channel is your go-to place. As I hope you could hear from today's podcast, um, Pack Unity is not just an HR initiative, a PX initiative, it's an everyone initiative. So we need all of us hand in hand working together. Um, we're always looking for more allies, more Pack Unity ambassadors. Um, so please join us along our journey. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself, Mary, Trisha, anyone on the PX team, and we would be happy to answer those. And if you're not a part of the pack, rjwolf.com backslash careers, come and join us on our mission. Um, and even if you don't join us, literally join us in how we show up and see those around us and seek to relieve leave the world a better place and like Trisha says when we know better we do better um the things we do make a difference so peace and love and all the good things and let's we're doing a classic Minnesota goodbye right now <laughs> we, yeah.